Good day to all of you. Welcome to our art appreciation class. I hope you have been watching the videos that we have released that I have released the past few weeks and I hope you were able to cope up with the requirements that are being given in the previous videos. Now today we will be focusing on the elements of art and this week specifically we will be covering the contents under this unit. Remember, this unit will comprise a lot of contents because of, uh, we will be discussing certain contents in visual writing as well as in auditory. Take two. We will be discussing content in, we will be discussing the different kinds of arts which includes um, we will be discussing the different kinds of arts, which include visual arts, auditory or time arts, combined arts, and many others. So I hope you will stay tuned and you will listen very carefully to the content of this discussion. All right, so we are here with the elements and principles of art. First of all, we have to identify the categories under um, under arts, of course, so that we would know where this kind of art form falls. So we have these four kinds or four elements that we are describing here. First is we have the visual or the space arts. Again, the visual or the space arts. And this is divided into two categories. We have the two-dimensional art and as well as the three-dimensional art. The two-dimensional art um, this is defined as a kind of art that has the height and the width, but it does not have the depth. Okay, so there are only two dimensions. That's why it is called two-dimensional art. And then we also have the three-dimensional art, which has the three dimensions, the height, the width, and the depth. Okay, so examples of these two um, of this kinds of dimensions or for two-dimensional arts we have paintings drawings prints and photography this means it does not have any depth at that so you can just visually see it you can see the width and the height but there's no depth okay now here comes now the three-dimensional arts which has the depth the inclusion of the third dimension which, which is the depth so Examples of this, we have sculpture, we have environmental art, we have craft and folk art, we also have architecture and other kinds of mixed media art. Okay, so we have the three-dimensional art, we call that as well, because there are three dimensions. Now let's go back to the categories or the elements of art. So we have, we continue, there's, apart from the visual arts or the space arts, we have the auditory or the time art. The auditory or time art is a type of art that um, is that actually considers the element of time. Okay, it is appreciated through the element of time. And a very good example for this is we have the music and poetry, the spoken word poetry, because there's that element of time for it to be fully appreciated. Okay, and then we have the literary arts. Before there were only categories. The literary arts would actually fall into. Uh, there, there was no classification at that, you know. Uh, it, it's just subsumed under combined arts because it's literary arts is usually combined. But then again, uh, just recently, it is art. It is actually separated to be an independent form of art. So we have le the literary arts. So creative writing, even blogging falls on the, you know, creative writing and blogging, poetry, and so forth they actually fall in this category so if you are into that type of art then you have you are very good with the use of its medium which is the words okay now another kind of art or another element general element we have the combined arts this is the combination of the different forms like the visual art and then we have the literary art or the visual art and then the auditory. So we will get to discuss each of these later on in the content um, of this unit. Now, but 
actually the discussion that we will have today is focused on visual art, especially on the elements and principles. But before we go into the specificity or the specific parts, let's go into the elements and principles of art in general. So, of course, we have first color. You have the color. It is one of the most important elements of art because of its aesthetic nature. It inspires more emotions and feelings. Okay. Now, color, we may say that it does not have, it's just, it's just, these are just used and nothing more. But don't you know that the appreciation of the art Focus it actually has a bigger emphasis on the elements of the color. Yes, it's that's a part of the reality. And I'll tell you. And I'll tell you further. Now, there are different kinds of colors, but we have to consider uh, where these colors are coming from. In reality, there are only three colors primary colors as we call them because all these other colors all the other 60 if there are you know if you in your crayola collection there are 64 uh, 64 specific colors the reality is all of those just come from three primary colors just a mixture of these three primary colors so we have the primary colors we have the red the blue and the yellow again we have the red the blue and the yellow. These are primary colors. So if you would notice in your computer printer, you only have these colors, right? You know, you do not have all the 64 other colors in the color wheel in, in the computer, but you just have these primary colors and then the computer, the printer will just do the mixing. Now, when you mix um, these primary colors, you form, ter uh, you form secondary colors and then the tertiary colors. Now, secondary colors are the combination of the primary colors. So if we combine the, the red and the yellow, we form the orange, okay? Now, if that is the secondary color, orange, the combination of two primary colors. Now, if you combine yellow, and blue we get we combine yellow and blue we get green okay we get green if we combine blue and red we get what you get blue and red we get purple now if we combine yellow and orange then we will have the tertiary color, which is the yellow-orange, right? Let's proceed. So this is the color wheel, and there are directions here on what are the primary, what are the secondary colors, and what are the tertiary colors. With colors, there are also there are also considerations. There are also specific considerations. We have to consider the type of colors that are cool colors. If you want your house to be to have the ambience of coolness, then you have to choose these types of colors like blues, the greens, and the purples. But if you want the warmer type or the warmer colors, you have the red, oranges, and yellows. But then again, there are a lot more to learn about colors, especially in the psychology of colors. That's a whole different discussion. But let's go continue with the next part of the elements. And then we have the tone. Tone is the lightness and darkness of a color. It is used to help show the differences of images from light to dark or from dark to light. So tone also gives depth distance, and rhythm in a composition. It helps show contrast, harmony, balance, repetition, dominance, gradation, and unity in paintings. So the tone is necessary. If you will go over, if you will look at your, your cell phones, then there is that camera editor. You could see uh, a part there where the tone could be edited. If you want the tone to be warmer, you get to have warmer, you know, the tone would be either reddish or yellowish. But if you want the tone to be cooler, then there is the, the tone of blue, you know, there are these adjustments. 
So tone is important in setting up, uh, in setting up the depth, the distance, and the composition in general. And another element is we have the lines. So lines are used to control the eye movement, delineate the shapes, and indicate texture, whether it is rough, smooth, or with volume. It will definitely tell you, you know, it will definitely indicate something. When, they, when it is rough, it is smooth, the lines are part of it. Okay, so there are four basic uh, types of lines. So we have the horizontal, we have the horizontal, then we have the vertical, and then we have the diagonal, and then we have the curve. But if it is, uh, it's just a curve, then that's a one curve. But if it, it has a pattern, we have we have the curvilinear. Okay, so so let's go to the shapes and the forms. We know the different kinds of shapes, like the square, the rectangle, the circle, uh, the heart, and so on. But let's continue with the other types of forms and shapes. A shape is a two-dimensional figure enclosed by a line. So it has to be enclosed to create the shape. Now there are two types of shapes. We have the geometric shapes. These are precise shapes that look as if they were made with a ruler or other drawing tools. So you have the rectangle, you have the triangle, you have the square, because they are precise. Okay, so you call this a geomet geometric shapes or uh, inorganic shapes. Now, organic shapes or non-geometric shapes are not regular or even. They are not regular or even. Their outlines curve to make freeform shapes. So examples would be uh, the shape, uh, the shell of you know of the snail, but the corals, the leaves. They do not have certain geometry, so they are organic. Now in this figure, uh, as you can see in the screen. It's actually made up of multiple shapes. So what shapes can you find? Okay, I'll give you a few seconds. Try to find the shapes first. All right, now let's reveal the shapes that you could find. So here, with this picture alone, you can find a lot of shapes. So there are triangles, there are circles, and then we have uh, we have, you know, rectangles, and then we have squares. So this is just in one picture, and I have not highlighted the others as well. Now, let's go with space. This is another element. This is another element of art in general. By the way, again, these are the general elements of art, not just specific to, to two-dimensional art, but um, art in general, okay? So space are areas that surround the objects in a painting. They could be found in between, around, above, and or below objects. Space can be open or closed and positive or negative. Space is important in painting, yet many have overlooked creating the appropriate space, which eventually result in crowded, flat, and floating appearance. Now, there are six ways to create the illusion of space in painting or drawing or in any two-dimensional surface. Now, in, in this discussion in space, it is focusing on the two-dimensional uh, surface of art. Okay, so let's, let's discover the different um, use of space. So the use of space in art, so we have the overlapping. So in this image, you can see the red overlapped color blue. Okay, so overlapping, this occurs when objects block other objects behind them. So it is used for, you know, for certain purpose. We also have placement on the paper and how it is placed. So objects that are arranged higher in the picture actually appears farther than those placed lower. So it's, it looks farther the one that appears higher. These are techniques, by the way, on how you can create beautiful works of art, beautiful paintings and drawings later on. Now, another is the size. 
to achieve the effect of further images or objects, you know, for further images or objects, then the objects must appear smaller when they are farther and larger when they are nearer, just like the example in the screen. Now, as well as with details, the use of space in, in details, by the way. So the nearer the objects need more details. So the nearer it is, the clearer the details. But the farther they are, the lesser the details are. So if you can see the screen, the word stop is very clear when it is near, when it is near uh, the perspective. But if it is far, it goes farther, it becomes blur and then when it is the farthest it, it's actually unclear now so further objects need lesser details okay color and volume have cooler or brighter color values while closer objects must take warmer or darker color values so this is the principle the general principle but then again um, in creativity there is that freedom that you can explore in, depending on, of course, depending on um, the expression, the artistic expression that you would like to evoke in your art or work. Now, we also have perspective. The linear perspective is a method that creates the illusion of space and dimensions in a flat surface. So if you could see this uh, picture, Look at the linear perspective. It goes, it goes farther. It has, uh, it has this perspective. It creates an illusion. The same is true with the previous sample. Okay, there's that perspective. When it's near, it's bigger, and then it, when it goes uh, farther, it's smaller. Okay, it creates that um, the illusion. Okay, now we go to another element, which is texture. This refers to the feel or the tactile of the surface of an object, whether it is rough, smooth, ridged, furry, or silky. So when you touch, you touch your hands. Is it soft? Is it rough? Is it silky? My, my, my blouse is silky. So you feel the table. You feel your hands. You feel you feel um, maybe you know the texture of the mask, whether you're allergic to it or not. That's part of the texture. Okay, so that's how you determine texture. Now there are three kinds of texture. We have the tactile textures. These are textures that can be touched or felt. Okay, the one I gave you as an example. You have to feel it. Artificial textures, however, are man-made surface quality that are supposed to look and feel like the original material. So, for example, a turf. If you're familiar with a turf, uh, a turf is like a faux. It's a faux grass or a fake grass on fake grass on a soccer field or in a football field, but it is fake. It has. It looks and feel like this the original grass, but it is man-made. But it is man-made. So it has an artificial texture. Now we also have the visual textures. These are textures evoked by a photography or picture depicting an object. So um, the texture is just observed through vision, through its visual image. Let's go to the principles of art. Again, let's go to the principles of art. And I will give you a clue as to how you can memorize it. We have cube vump. Cube vump. And we will know what this is. So first, cube vump. The C stands for contrast. This refers to the value contrast in a work of art. There is high contrast and then there is low contrast. The high contrast refers to a great difference between the colors or other elements. And low contrast refers to a slight difference between the colors or the elements. So if you can see in this example, uh, the figure on your left or on our left, which is the one in blue and with the other figures in it, 
The contrast is very obvious. There is that high contrast because of, remember blue is a cool color and then yellow is a, is a kind of warm color. So it's actually contrasting when it comes to the color, right? So it's high contrast. Let's go with the other image, okay? By the way, with the color and symmetry as well. Let's go with this other image. This shows low contrast in color and symmetry because look at the look at the the color. It does not. Um, it does not. It, there's no. You know, it's not very far off from the background color or its actual color. Even its line or the the line that creates it. It's actually close to the background corner so that's no contrast now we also have unity unity is the arrangement of elements to create a feeling of oneness when the parts of a work come together the work has unity each part fits in with the others to create a single idea quality or a whole design so again the arrangement of elements to create a feeling of oneness so in this picture what is that feeling of oneness it could be the stretched arms and it could be the the tilt of the head and it could be the flow of their dresses that goes all the way through okay so there's that feeling of unity so when you look at the work of art you look at the contrast you look at the unity so this time, you have an idea how to look at a certain work of art. Now let's go to balance. Balance in an artwork is the placement of all the elements of the composition so that their visual weights seem evenly distributed. It is the composition of the artwork. It is the composition of the artwork that stabilizes it. Okay, so we will give you different, I will give you different examples of balance. So there is the formal balance or the symmetrical balance. Formal balance is a type of balance in which the contents on others, either side of a center are exactly the same. So there's symmetry. If you look at this example, symmetry, it's equal in balance. Informal balance or asymmetrical balance is a type of balance in which Two sides of an artwork are not exactly alike, yet still appears pleasantly even. Take for example, this one. There is a, uh, a uh, I'm not familiar with chess characters, so that's why. So look at this. In this chess characters, there are four, uh, there are four, you know, smaller figures, and then there is a taller figure. But it look it has this balance though it is asymmetrical but visually it has that visual balance because the other one is tall the other though the others are small but there are many okay so there is that asymmetry then we have the radial balance this of course when all the elements in the composition radiate outward from the center toward it just like this example in this um, in this picture the flower in this picture so again I gave you symmetry and asymmetry and then we have emphasis emphasis is the principle of art concerned with making an element or object in a work stand out okay Take for example in these pictures. So there is how did the image give emphasis? It is through highlighting the color, editing the rest of, of the image in black and white, yet the emphasis is on the colored image or colored object, just like the flower as well. So it is concerned with making an element or object in a work of art stand out. Now we have variety. It is a principle of art concerned with combining different art elements like colors, lines, shapes, and textures to increase visual interest. Again, to increase for visual interest. So if there is this 
variety. There are a lot of elements playing in, like a lot of colors, a lot of lines, a lot of shapes and texture. So there's that visual interest because everything is in one place. Okay. That's variety. And we also have movement. Again, cube bump. Okay. So we have the movement. Movement is the principle of art used to create the look and feel of action and to guide the viewer's eyes throughout a work of art. Artists create movements through a careful blending of elements such as line and shape. So there's that feeling of movement in a work of art. And we also have pattern. A pattern is a design in which lines, shapes, forms, or colors are repeated. Patterns can be regular or irregular. So here, in this example, you can see immediately your eyes will be drawn into a certain pattern. And in this example, in this picture image of a church, you can see that the pattern is on the, okay, it's like on its column, the arc in it. So there we go, we see the pattern. So pattern help establish a rhythm. So. Rhythm is the regular repetition of lines, shapes, colors, and other art elements in the same or similar ways to suggest flowing movement. So, a, repeat, a repeated pattern creates rhythm. The repetition of any art element over and over forms a pattern. Okay, it definitely has rhythm. So we also have harmony. It is a principle of art that is concerned with combining art elements to create pleasing appearance. So again, it has to be with pleasing appearance. Is there harmony? In short, it's not too extremely attractive. Is there, are the patterns are in the right place? Now we also have the proportion. This deals with a proper relation between two objects or parts. The parts of a work should relate to the other parts as well as the entire composition. So if you look at the pro the proportion in this figure up here, the fish and the fisherman, is it of the proper pro proportion visually or, or with a realistic point of view? It is not at the right propor proportion. But then again, maybe there is an artistic value for this. That's why the, the, uh, the artist created it in such a way. But, again, but then again, the proportion should be considered as well in a form of art. All right. So this is our discussion in the elements of visual arts.